Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week. And this one is a special project. So what does that mean? It means in our subscription box, our quarterly subscription box, every month we do something different that's not on paper. So for this one, we're going to be designing your own toolbox. So if you don't have our box, you can also get this as a kit on our website at letsmakeart.com. But this is just a wood box, so you can still go through this tutorial with us if you'd like. We're going to go be going through a couple different things that you can apply to any type of lettering that you'd like to do on your own. So the steps that we're going to do. The first one is... I'm going to introduce and talk about bounce lettering. I've talked about it a little bit before, but I wanted to actually have a worksheet that can get your brain going on how to do it. So this also <coughs> is, if you don't have our box, like I said, you can get this on our website and you can download this practice sheet so you can get practicing. So this is going to be step one is we're going to go over different bounce lettering. Step two is we're gonna go through this sheet and we're gonna go through different sketches and this is just your time to practice, get it all out. Step three is we're going to actually take your wood box that looks like this and there's a couple different parts that you can design. So you're gonna design your own box and I'm gonna be using painter's tape. So that might be another supply you might want. Um, and then the final one step is, ooh, bubble, do you hear my voice? Like, you got a frog in your throat. <laughs> Man, I gotta swallow it. Yeah, you, you shouldn't have frogs in your throat. Got a freaking frog. Freaking frog. <laughs> um, the fourth step is we're gonna go through gouache. So the reason why you can paint on wood is you can't paint with wood, paint on wood with watercolors. So I'm gonna show you guys all about gouache and also bleed proof white. So the different paints are. I'm not gonna actually do the swatches. So Keenan's just gonna add text over it but the give first one of, give me a hand model for I'll do a little, little thing oh do, yeah do one of these bleed proof white <laughs> that works <laughs> does that work yeah that's good <laughs> do you need more space I was thinking you go down you go bleed proof white black wash gold wash oh yeah bleed proof white black wash gold wash you should just do this for me I don't know <laughs> I don't I don't have the hands for it <laughs> Um, bleed, all three of these are essentially an opaque version of watercolors. So that's why they come in these um, containers that we have. And they're more paste-like. So I'll go through that a little bit more. Um, but if you don't have our box, um, gouache comes in a tube like this. And then so if you want to buy these at the store. Oh, I don't. Oh, here it is. Bleed proof white. I don't know where Keenan wants these placed. <laughs> Does that work? This is what Bleed Proof White really looks like. Um, but we just gave you a little bit so you can sample and get going with our project. So that's all you need. It almost looks like you're making a plan for an attack. You know, like a wall <laughs> that you're... Set up your... Yeah, <laughs> getting it sectioned off. My soldiers. <laughs> um, okay, so step one is your lettering. I realized that... I, hmm, we're going to mix things up actually. And usually when I go through these worksheets, I'm using watercolors. Um, but for this one, since I'm not using watercolors and I didn't ask you to have that for this project, I'm actually going to show you just using your pencil. Um, you can practice going through this with your watercolors if you'd like. And that's probably what I'd suggest more than using your gouache just so you don't use it all. Um, but I'm just going to use a pencil for this one so you can practice. So what's happening is if we're looking at this sheet is that I showed this middle line is called the X height or the baseline. And so that is where all of your X, your smaller letters, your lowercase letters will hit. Whereas this top line is called the ascending line and that's where like your D and your L or your T, so the taller letters will hit. So that's just a, a guideline to help um, kind of wrap your brain around it. What's happening is that whenever I talk about bounce lettering, or if you've heard that term out in the world, bounce lettering essentially means when your letters kind of have this variance to it. So instead of just being straight all with everything sitting on the bottom line or the baseline, which is this line, 
your letters kind of have this variance to it. So that's why when you're comparing, I want to, that has my notes on there. When you are looking at just these two, when looking at this, you'll notice that this line, these three come below the baseline. So that's why I said bounce lettering, experiment with lowering the bottom and end of a few letters. So to do that, when I'm looking at this line and the way you can practice is if you were to write first and everything is on that line, when you want to experiment with it, what you're going to do is you're going to think about it and it's not every single letter. So I want to preface that what I'm teaching you is it's a little bit more advanced. So this is if this is your first project going through this, I really highly suggest going through either our beginner lettering series or just even go through any of the past projects because I don't want this to overwhelm you because I know that this can be something that there's a lot of things to think about. So don't be hard on yourself if you're like, this is too much, Nicole. It's okay. This is just a little bit more advanced that I wanted to explain because I've gotten this question a couple times. So what's happening is that instead, if I were to do it again and think about bounce lettering, I'm going to move this line a little bit lower. So this is called the exit stroke because it's the end of a letter. So it's exiting here and then I'm going to start my next letter there. So then if I were to do it again and think instead of stopping here, I'm going to go a little bit lower and just go below the baseline. So what I meant by it's not really every single one, it's not every other one, so there's not really a formula. I know some people really want me to give you a rule and a hard set rule that you can follow. It's not really something that I can give you, but what I want to empower you is to be able to take a step back and be able to look and show you that you can experiment. So if you notice specifically on this one and this one, is on here I went below the baseline on the R, the A, and the T, but on this one I only did it on the R and the A. And they're both great. There's nothing wrong with either one of them and they both have that variance. So you can mix it up and experiment. Another um, tool that might help is, actually I should show it, is this marker paper. So this is the Strathmore marker paper that I personally really love. And also, I don't think I have any in here. Um, this paper will work for your watercolor lettering. So it's a great one that if you have our box and you want to practice with watercolor lettering, it's a great paper to have. But the reason why I really like it is it's transparent. So um, tracing paper will work too, but um, if you do it with watercolor lettering, it won't work on there. It'll bubble up. But if you, let's say you have your own word and Let's say, what's another word? Create inspired doodle. Um, I'm gonna write, oh, I should write imagine, because that was another one that I had started to write. So if I were to write imagine, so for example, if I'm using this as my guideline, and, sorry, Keenan, I'm moving papers everywhere. <laughs> um, if I were to write imagine, and all of my letters, hit the X height in the baseline. So if I do that once, you can also use this paper and place it over, over it, and this is a great way for you to just practice, is now I'm going to use the first rule that I talked about, which was just lowering the bottom or thinking about the exit strokes, is I'm going to look at my baseline and I'm going to, bless you. Joy, thank you. <laughs> um, so if I were to draw, I'm going to think about, so on this one, I'm gonna do that trick and I'm gonna lower the baseline here. Or excuse me, lower below the baseline. So I'm gonna think about the exit stroke and I lowered it there. And then maybe on this one, I don't do that. And then on the G, so whenever you have a letter, or a, yeah, a letter that goes, am I shedding eyelashes? I don't know. That was the second one I've seen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man. Um, is 
the the letters that go below is it's it's a descending because it goes down in below the baseline. So the G, you don't have to think anything about that. But let's say on the next letter, I'm going to go below the baseline and extend it. So like that. Maybe on that one, I don't. And then on that one, maybe I just go a little bit more. So that's one option. And so that plays, if you can look at this without, is that plays with a little bit of the variance. If I were to mix it up, maybe I try it again. And this is a great way to practice that I suggest doing is on the next one, maybe I, let's say, let's try if I lower the I, but I don't lower the M. And then maybe I lower the A. So experiment and see what you like. So in this one, I didn't lower the N, so I'm gonna lower it on this one. So when looking at that, it's ever so slightly different and to an eye that doesn't really know what to look for, this just looks like this was their hand lettering and their handwriting. So <clears throat> now that you know kind of what to look for and how you can experiment, these are ways that I would suggest to build on top of it and just experiment with different things. So that is one way. So I'm gonna say that this is one way. Another way that you can experiment with is, is also changing the size of some letters. So if you're looking at my create examples again. So this is the one that was, everything's at the same height and at the base, same baseline. This has a few lower ones. And then for this one, what's happening is that I decided to make some letters a little bit bigger and some letters a little bit smaller. So the C is bigger and the A is a little bit smaller, for example. So what you can do is if I were to take my same imagine and let's say I, Let's say I make these the same size, but then what if I make my A a little bit smaller? Maybe my I smaller. And then you can also, especially on ends, maybe you make the hump a little bit bigger. So there's another option. And let's say I want to experiment in the same thing where I just change a few of them up. I'm gonna use the same thing as my starting point, maybe I make the I a little bit smaller. And let's play with these humps of the M. Maybe my G's a little bit bigger. And then let's experiment and make the first hump of the N taller. So those are four different ways you can fix up your own hand lettering. And I like I said, I really hope this doesn't overwhelm you and instead empower you to see how can I, how can I mix it up? Because I think a lot of times we say, that's just the way I write, I can't change it up. So these are four different ways, or it's actually two different ways um, that you can experiment and I encourage you to use this guideline as your starting point. That was the entire lesson that I just wanted to go through. When you're going through your designing now to make your own box. Where'd my other paper go? Oh, right here. Did you know that, Keenan? I did not know that. Isn't that cool? My mic wasn't on. I did oh. not know that. <laughs> Little ways to change it up. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so the second step is now you, this is your time to design. So because you just have one box, I know it can be a little intimidating that you don't wanna mess up, I understand. You can use this practice sheet to your advantage. So what I suggest you to do is take your time to use a pencil or you can use your watercolors if you wanna practice, but use this time to design. So if you are looking, this can either be, I made it so that this is literally the top, this is the same size of this, so this is the top of your box if you wanna play with that or if you can use this and just pretend this isn't there and design the side of your box. So on your box you have, there's many different sides that you can design. So use this time to sketch out. So, oh, I forgot to show the actual, I didn't have this, did I? No, you didn't, but now we can show it. Now I can show it. <laughs> so this is the top of mine. So when I was doing this on my own was I was saying if I have the word create 
And if I think about this as my whole entire space, how, yeah, how do I want to, oh, yeah, thank you. How do I want to design that? So if you start with your word, and maybe you have a long quote, so you really need to figure out the layout of this. Um, but you can experiment, especially with one word. So what I first did was I remember is I wrote it once, and then I realized, okay, I have all this space because it's such a small word. So that's why I added a line to the beginning and a line to the end, just to, to extend it. Um, and then taking, jumping off of what we learned with the bounce lettering from your practice worksheet, is maybe if you have, let's see, on this one I wrote imagine. If you have a word, so let's say, I'm looking at this, if I use the word imagine, and I'm gonna draw myself an imaginary baseline for myself, is I can do the same thing where I use this and I draw, maybe I extend some letters and I make this a little bit smaller. Maybe this is smaller and then that's higher. And if it helps you, you can also draw your other line if that helps guide you. But use this to practice. So instead of using this as this isn't your baseline just know that you want to create be, whenever you have a letter that descends so if you have a big g or if you have, have a big t just make your letters a little bit smaller to fit in this space so it doesn't overextend so when I'm gonna, does that work yep okay so the other thing that you can think about is as you're doing this and using this time to figure out your lettering is if you, if you think about spatially, this is a whole nother lesson in itself is just thinking about where you want to place your wording. So when I was looking at this, this one made sense for me to center it. You also don't have to, you can have, maybe it just says hi right here and then you add little patterns right here. So this is your time to experiment. So when I was doing this on my own, I thought it'd be cool for this one. I was like, what if I had some stripes here and maybe my word was right here? So you can just draw yourself some, it's like, it's the layout planning of it and then you draw your word over it. Um, maybe you also, you can, have your letters. You can write Keenan's name. Yes. This was yours. And you can have your letters stack like that. So that's another option if you want that on the side of it. Um, or maybe looking at this, let's think, oh, it could look cool maybe if it just had a little, oh, even if, I've seen some people in our group have some really awesome signatures. Maybe your signature just goes down right here and you add some sort of pattern and maybe it's a leaf pattern over here. So by having this here and then being able to execute it on here, that will help you so much with your pre-planning um, and alleviate some stress when you get to the final project. In addition to that, so that's step two. So step three now is when we're actually going to your physical project. What you can do is use your pencil again as your friend. So take the one that you like and you can actually, let me do it on here. I'm doing the same thing. I think I kind of want to move this over a little bit, so I'm just going to center this a little bit more. <coughs> um, but use, guess what? You can use your pencil as your friend because you're gonna go over it, and with black, you won't see your pencil lines, so you can go over it. So you can draw yourself your outline. For my side, what I did for Imagine here was I used blue painter's tape. So this is just a fun way that I wanted to show that if you wanted to add some geometric design to, designs to your box, you can use painter's tape. So this is just, it's, well, it's for paint, <laughs> but it's better because if you were to just use scotch tape, some of the paint might get underneath. So this is designed so that 
ideally you'll get a smooth straight line. So that's how I got this perfectly straight line was I didn't freehand paint this. I used painter's tape to my advantage. So what I did was I... Until you said that, I actually thought you freehanded it. Really? Yes. My hand is not that steady. <laughs> I could, but it just wouldn't be a perfectly straight line. So this is the magic trick. It's a good trick. And if you want to make, like on this one, I had the skinnier one. Well, you can, I'll show you two ways to do it. You can do it like that. So I'm going to, I'm gonna mix this up. So this part is gonna be a color. This stripe is gonna be a color. Oops. So what happens is that I need a little bit more right here. Um, but another thing that you can do, so if you think about it, that means that my negative space is going to be this size. So these two negative spaces are going to be all the same size. So what you can do is you can cut your, let's see if I can do this straight. You can cut your tape to create a different width. One thing I would suggest for making tape uh, thinner. Do you have a better, yeah. I'm just thinking. Go for it. If you have an X-Acto knife, you just put the tape on the table and cut. Oh, or with a, a cutting ruler. pad if you have, like oh, use a ruler or something like that. Because tape, you may not be able to trust it. That's genius. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. So maybe I make this really small. So that way my next Stripe will be that size. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So I can still fit, I like all these stripes. I can still fit Imagine, and I'm just going to write it a little bit smaller than I did here. Maybe I'll write something else instead, um, but the fit there. So once you have your tape situated, what I suggest doing, there's not really rule as far as if you should do your lettering first or if you should do your pattern first. I think it all is personal preference and it depends on what you'd like to do. For me, the reason why was I am doing my pattern first so then I know what space I have to, to work with for my lettering because I can manipulate that. So it's personal preference. Um, once I have those prepared, I'm going to... I guess I don't need this anymore. Um, get my colors set up. So I have my little pan. Oh, what do you need? can you hand me that cup of water, please? Yes. Um, thank you. So like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to be using bleed proof white, black gouache and gold gouache. So I have some gold on here from my other projects. So I'll just start with gold. So what's happening is I'm actually not going to use a lot and I'm just using kind of like a pea size. So you don't really need that much. And you'll notice especially that the gold, even though this gold and black, as you'll see, are two, are, whoops, are <coughs> both gouache, this gold is a lot thicker. So there's nothing wrong with it because we're gonna add water to it to waken it up. It's just thicker. I don't know the science behind it. I bet Michael would know. He might. Um, it's, it's Michael Sarah's husband. Yes. It's um, probably made out of something different. Uh, but so I just like to use the bottom. You can use, if you have anything else, I just like to use the bottom of my brush because it's handy. I just want to get all the gold off. Okay. So start with that. And now get some black. So you'll notice when I'm doing this, it is a lot more paste, toothpaste-like, whereas this one was a little bit thicker. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And then the white. So if you also don't have the same pan like I do, you can just use a plate. It doesn't need to be, doesn't actually need to have these specific wells. It's just personal preference that I like it. Um, but you also, if you do have our box or anything that it comes in, is you can just use the cap. So oftentimes this is my own bleed proof white. That's just my personal one. 
and it gets chalky. But I like to use the cap of this and I just add water to it. Ah, that's smart. Yeah, so there's just so many different ways that you can use it. One thing I wanted to mention was if you don't have these exact supplies, you can still paint your own box. Sorry, I needed to, we had a snack break. <laughs> <laughs> really is what happened. And an M&M. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, is that um, you can also use acrylic. So acrylic is harder to paint and letter with, but if you wanted to do your design and pattern, you can use acrylic paint for that. Um, that's just one suggestion. Also, if you don't have that, you can also use either a paint pen or a Sharpie for your lettering if you did want to use that. I just wouldn't paint with acrylic, or wouldn't letter with acrylic. Wanted to preface all that before we jump back in. Okay, for your paint, so you got it all laid out on your pan. However, they're not ready to paint with quite yet. So what you need to do is you actually need to wake them up. You need to add some water to them. So to do that, I'm just going to add just a little bit of water. You don't need too much. So all I did was I just dipped my brush in here and then brought over some water. So I'm just going to, what you're looking for, and maybe you have a practice sheet next to you. So you're just looking for an even consistency. So if it's too, if it looks like that, and it's a little bit more scratchy, then you need a little bit more water. Will you move that up a little and to far right? Yeah. So that we can use, show them like real close what it looks like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart. 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 You're smart. <laughs> okay. Um, if, it's, if you had too much water, then it's too watery and it's not opaque enough. So for example, and it looks like that, and it's just really thin, then you'll just need to add a little bit more gouache. Um, Cause yeah, you just can't see it. So it's just a really watered down version. So you just need a little bit of that. Let's see, for the black, you don't need to add as much because it's already a great consistency. We add a little bit more. Okay, so that seems ready. I probably should have done my white first. But you need more water. All good. Mm. Let's see what happens. It's minor. If you want to, you can have a new. No, we're totally good. If you need a new one, so this one, the white. You can't see what I'm doing, but that feels good. So we're just making our own consistency to paint with. Okay. Does gouache take longer to dry? Then, then watercolor? Yes, a little bit. It's actually not too crazy, um, which you'll see, just, but that's a good question. Just like a different consistency. So it's because it's a little sure. bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not like it's a thick consistency that it needs an entire day to dry. Um, okay, so when you're painting, if you'd like, if you have, because these are small areas, you don't need to do that. But if you want, if you have a larger area and just a bigger surface, you can use any, this one also comes in your box. Um, this is the aquash brush that we've been using. So you can paint with that. Or if you have the round six from our watercolor group, you can use that as well. You push your box up a little higher. But for this one, second. Yes, and then watch your head. Heed. Heed is I'm just going to go in and I'm gonna paint. So maybe this does need a little bit more water. Um, I'm literally just painting over this. And you can overlap onto your blue tape because once I remove it, it'll be gone. So the thing that you'll notice when you're painting with these materials is that if you look ever so slightly, you can see a little bit of wood. So it's not a stark, solid color. If you want that, you would just need to do a few more layers. And I'd probably wait till this was entirely dry and then paint another coat on top of it. Personally, I like the look of having just a little bit texture, so I'm gonna leave it like that. But if you're wondering, you can just add another coat. So I'm gonna do that. Then I wanna make a gold stripe. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just paint 
inside my line. So if you feel like I n you need more water to paint over it, just add more water. As far as the hold of holding this brush, there's no rhyme or reason. Whatever works for you. And then, let's see. I'm going to keep the black just for my lettering. So I'm going to do a white stripe here. And then as far as, as Keenan mentioned, drying, I am doing this first. I should have mentioned it. I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to do the other parts of my box. So this can dry while we're talking rather than right away me lifting this up because then I think it will mess it up. Um, so I give it 10 minutes. We'll see how that works. Um, just don't do it right away. Yeah. And then watch your head. As I'm painting. Yes, as you're painting. <laughs> Multitask. Okay, so we're just painting just a thin layer. Okay. So like I said, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. And then I'll I think I'm gonna add a few more stripes to that. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to letter the top of mine. So because I have my pencil line, all I actually need to do is trace when you're doing this. When you are lettering with gouache, know that if you've been used to lettering with watercolors, it's a little bit different. So if you need to practice, and maybe you take this sheet as your practice time, please feel free to do that and just let her right on top of it. I want you to feel um, that it's okay if you don't get it right on the first try and that this is something new. So you're gonna have some hiccup and it's, hiccups and it's okay. So a tip is, I haven't mentioned it this, in this video, but I just naturally did it, so I wanna say it, is that I tilted my, instead of having this straight, I tilted this a little bit because it's a little bit easier for me to paint. The other thing is that because this is so small, I just thought about this. If it helps you, tape this down to the table. Because if you're like me, apparently I move a lot. <laughs> oh, is that in a good spot for you? That's or actually in a great spot. Awesome. Um, okay. Thank you for the hair flip. You're welcome. <laughs> um, man. Yeah, my this is such a small area, so watch, watch the top of your head. The top of my head. <laughs> Can you see the top of my hair? Not on the top of the but the side can. <laughs> I'm gonna tape this down because it's moving too. Yeah. Just trying to do things to help yourself. Okay. So when you're doing this. Um, as you've learned throughout some of our other videos, what happens with lettering is it's thin on the up and thick on the down. You have the freedom to ig completely ignore what I'm saying or follow along. It doesn't really matter, um, but I want to show you how, if you're looking at this, how I was able to do that and why, if you're looking at this, this is a little bit thinner just on the top of here and then it goes thicker and then it goes thinner. So what we're doing is, on the first one, I'm gonna make this thin, this entrance stroke. So I'm actually just lightly grazing. You don't have to press very hard. And so when you're doing this, I'm simply just using the tip of this. So even when I dip in, when I'm dipping into my paint, is I'm not getting the entire amount on here because as you can see, it just globs. And I feel this, I notice that this feels a little bit too thick, so I'm actually gonna add a little bit more water. That feels a little bit better. Um, you might be wondering, can I use black watercolor paint, Nicole? And I will test this for you, actually. Pause, I got, I thought a random of a random thought that I just wanna use this as a lesson. Mm -hmm. This is black watercolor paint that also came in your box. So let's see if this works. So 
if you look ever so slightly, why do I say that a lot? <laughs> ever so slightly, I should say skosh. Ever so slightly, you shouldn't say skosh. <laughs> ever so slightly. If Keenan can zoom in on here, actually, I'm gonna draw this to compare a little bit more. You scoot it up closer to your taped piece. There like that? Yes. Then you can zoom in, okay. I can I'm giving you. The camera. And then zoom in. I'm giving you your time frame. <laughs> so thick on the down, thin on the up. Um, we're going to compare. I should have drawn that a little bit bigger. Can they, can you see that? Let me, oh yeah. I'll draw it bigger. This is what they can see. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, awesome. Okay, so you can see that this is with the black gouache and this is with black watercolors. So it really bled through. Because if you think about the way, I'm not a scientist again, so how is wood made? Keenan, do you want to give us a lesson? <laughs> how is wood made? <laughs> so wood is a tree. I know, I'm just kidding. They, I mean, I can do some basic. So it's a porous wood. And there the water color is going to soak into the water easier than the gel of the gouache. The gel. That's I'm, what. That's how I'm picturing gouache right now. It is like gel. I call it paste, but gel totally yeah. works yeah, too. Yeah, gel works because I feel like it's more gel when you add water. Yes. That's so the keen in the explanation. <laughs> there's a bind that's in gouache, and I can't remember what it's called, but there's a bind that's in gouache that it keep it um, keeps it together because essentially this is just watercolor but there's a bind and that's the reason why with watercolors is like Keenan was saying wood is more porous so it just literally seeps into every single crevice that it can which is like all the little splinters here so it seeps into it whereas gouache because of the binding and the way it's made is it sits on top of it so it's seeping in versus sipping on, sitting on top so yeah. that's why you can't I wouldn't suggest, I guess you can do that, um, but I wouldn't suggest using watercolors on this project because of that. There's your lesson of the day. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna keep going. So if you find that when you're painting this, <clears throat> if it's too watery, and so it is doing something similar to this, bubble in my throat, um, add more gouache to it. It's okay, just add more gouache to your paint if it starts to bleed. So I'm gonna keep going with this. So I'm gonna go thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. So because this is so small, I don't need to press very hard on my thick on the down, as maybe you would if you have a lot bigger of a um, letter. So when I am going to do this really long stroke, I might just start and do my E and then I'm going to, this is all personal preference. I wanna make this good. I, so what's happening is my arm can't do this very well. I don't know why, it just feels really awkward to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick this back up and when I'm trying to do the end of my E is I'm just gonna do this. So for me, it's easier for me to pull towards me to draw a straight line. So that's easier. And maybe I'll curl my T like that too, or cross my T. It'd be cool to do a spiral in that little dip where your thumb goes. Oh. Hmm. If I made this a little bit, I'm gonna do it for you. Okay. I just wonder. <laughs> that's awesome. I didn't know which way to start my spile. That's what I was thinking in my head. Our friend, the fly, is back. Frederick. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, this is also just a minor lesson that I can give you guys, is I pressed too hard on my A, I realize, so it's a little bit thicker. This is all personal preference, and the only reason why I wanna show you is that this is just me wanting to um, use this as another opportunity to, to teach. So what I can do is if you think about it, is if, 
let me say this again. I don't want you, on your personal thing, I don't want you to be so nitpicky on yourself that on everything else you make here on Forward, you're nitpicking your thick lines or your thin lines. Please don't do that. However, I want to show you this because this is one word and I can use this as a lesson to just guide you guys for the future on how to know this. That's just my little pep talk. So what's happening is I noticed that my A, the thick down part of my A is a little bit thicker than the other ones in comparison. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to really slightly just thicken up these ones just a skosh. Nice. <laughs> just a little bit. And gosh, Frederick. I was about to sing Why You Gotta Be So Rude. Why you gotta be so rude. Please go away, fly. <laughs> it's on your head. <laughs> ah! um, okay, so I'm just making this also a tad bit thicker. And the beautiful thing about this is because it's just black, you won't even notice that I went back over it. So that just helped my eye a little bit more so it's a little bit more cohesive. Again, don't do this on everything, I just wanted to show you. Okay, I'm going to now switch up and let that dry. This is good enough. It's a little tad bit wet, but I think we'll be good if I... Yeah, we're good. Yeah, that was like 10 minutes. Yeah, nice. So I'm just ripping this off really slightly. This feels like magic. It looks like magic. Oh, and actually, recycle, reuse. I'm just gonna reuse this one. And when I'm looking at this is I want to add, let's say another stripe right here. So it, this is, because when I realized when I looked at this is there was just a lot of negative wood space. So I just want to add a little bit more. But you can also leave that. So if you want, you can add that there. I'm just going to add one more just to fill that in. One more gold one. Um, so this is your time to design. Maybe you draw, like I said, you draw flowers on here, or what would you draw on yours, Keenan? I like the lines, but I would do the tape differently. How would you do your tape? So. <laughs> would you make a geometric shape? Yeah, I would do. I would do less of like an angled shape and do maybe an angled than a hard. A heart. Hard. Oh, uh, hard. Like a hard left or right, not like, a heart. I might do a heart. I don't know. I could do a heart a that's geometric like a pixelated heart. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Like that'd this? That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be neat. I don't know how you would do that on this small of an area. It would take forever. <laughs> a lot of dedication. <laughs> I like that. So you do not as hard of harsh of a line, you're saying? No, I would do a harsh line because oh, I would. like the straight edges because it's clean and more of a modern feel. Mm. But I would do like a left turn randomly in there. Oh, throw it in. Yeah, yeah. You and then I'd put anything. the create on above the line. On oh, the side. that means you have to write it really small. Yeah. You could do it. I'd try. <laughs> Use a round zero. Good job. Thanks. So there's so many different patterns that you can create. Maybe I realized I was like, this is why I wore this thing, because you can maybe draw an embroidery design like that. Or that's a little bit too wide. You can draw so many different types of shapes and use the blue painter's tape to your advantage. Okay, while that's drying, I am going to just show one last thing. Um, is this is my space to draw Imagine. And so when I thought about this, I liked choosing Imagine for this space because I had this negative space. So, so you can see where I'm going is I chose to not connect my G and curve it and loop it into this space. 
So when I'm doing this, and the reason why I went over in the beginning of our tutorial was with bounce lettering, because I wanted to empower you to realize you don't need a straight line to letter, and you don't need to focus about your letterings being exa the exact same, because the reality is that this is handmade. The reason why you're making this and not buying this from the store is that it's personal. You made it yourself, and it's, it's okay if it has that little, little DIY homemade feel to it. So I'm going to draw this, and when I do it, I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm going to not connect my G, and then my I and E fits in that little home right there. So you can also do this in gold if you want. I'm just gonna do it in black again. But when I'm doing this, it's the same thing. And so maybe on this one, I'm gonna show if I were to ignore, so on this one, I focused on the thick and the thin. I wanna show you that you can also, it's okay if you do all thin. You scoot it to the left? Yes. Perfect position. Perfect. Okay, so it can be all thin. Another tip I wanted to give you. I realize when I'm drawing this on the surface, my hand kind of goes like this a little bit, so it's a little bit awkward for me. So, we're going to improvise, and what I'm trying to find in this studio is something that's about the same height. I think this might be too tall, yep. I don't want to cheat and use this list because no one has two of these. <laughs> but I might just do that. Oh, her palette? Is her palette the same thing? Anyways, so what, I'm, what, what I suggest doing is finding something at a similar palette, or similar palette, <laughs> similar height. Oh, that's better. And it's okay if it's a little bit lower, but this way my hand has something to rest on, so it's el eliminating that awkward kind of rolling off. This totally works. Yeah. If you have a palette, use that. Okay. Yeah. So now my hand feels a lot more supported. And also when I'm lettering is I tend to grip a little bit closer so I know when I mentioned when you're painting don't really focus on your grip but what I'm lettering for me is it's harder for me if I were to paint like this I can't really do it very well it just takes a lot more concentration whereas if I grip a little bit closer I can more easily control the brush to do what I want to do So, notice that I'm just using the very tip of it to paint. And I'm getting to the end, so I'm also noticing that my hand is kind of going like this. So I'm going to move that. Sorry, Keenan. Loud noises. There we go. <laughs> I'm learning to paint in different positions. <laughs> I can't tell if that looks good or not. <laughs> that totally works. So I noticed my eye went straightly straight to this eyes a little bit thin, so I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. But this is an example of, so if we're looking just specifically at these two, this was focusing on the thick and the thin lines, and this was just simply thin. If you do this once and you decide, mm, I kind of want to make it thicker, it's just go in and add your thick lines like I did to um, make these thicker. Just add your thick lines. You can do that. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show was if you wanted to add... There we go, added a little bit more highlight. I might later on, um, when I'm gifting this to someone, I'm just gonna fill in a little bit more, but no one needs to see that. Okay, 
For this last one, I just wanted to show how if you look at this, I added a little bit of a white shadow to it. So if you do that, you can you actually can pick any color, but I'm going to show it with white. So I am just going to erase really lightly. I see some of my pencil lines. So, if you take your white, if you take your white and you just add a, <laughs> add a shadow to the one side. So I typically tend to have my light source coming from here, so a shadow creates on the left side. Or, but I also realize is you can see what I did here, so I'm actually gonna show something different. So I added a shadow to here. Guess what you can also do is you can just add a little highlight to your letters on top of your thick line. So, I'm improving again. Add a line on top, so I'm just using the very tip of my brush that looks so cool. Yeah. I just thought about it while we were doing it. So I'm just adding a very thin highlight. So I'm when I'm dipping in, I'm only dipping the tip of this because I just want, you really don't need a lot. So I'm just adding a little bit to doing that. Yeah, I like that. The other trick, Keenan, can you use can you zoom in? I'm quite zoomed in. Oh, you're good. Okay. So what, if you look at this really closely, is if you notice, because I can imagine this happening. Here. Mm. <laughs> Too many things that I can choose from. Um, is when you're doing this, pretend this is my thick line. Is when you're adding your highlight or if you're adding just another color mm, that's gonna need some time to dry what you're doing instead of just drawing a straight line that just looks like that what you can do pretend this is the white that's on top of it what you can do is if you think about it because this goes from thick to thin mimic your highlight to be similar so it's gonna go thick to thin Thin and you kind of taper off at the end. So that will help create that really slight illusion of it feeling more of a gradual rather than a, and it just hits it. So in, that's dry. Good job. I heard it. <laughs> so, like I was mentioning, instead of just drawing a straight, thick bottom line like that, I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to slightly taper off at the end. Can I see that? Yep. Okay, perfect. So that's just a little tip, a little pro tip. Pro tip. Um, as you're adding your highlight. Oh, I'm fun. I'm glad I did that on the video. Okay. I, you can go forever. There's so many different sides. Maybe you do the bottom as like a little, if you look here, you're in trouble. <laughs> Don't look here. Don't look at this without the lid off. <laughs> um, so this is your chance to have fun, be creative, make this your own. And I'd love to see what you make. So we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering where you can share it, you can join other people, you can encourage other people. You can say, I maybe messed up on this thing, but it's okay, I'm gonna keep going. By coming together as a community, it really helps inspire and encourage each other along this craft. So I hope you had fun. Um, as a quick recap, we went over bounce lettering in the beginning that can be applied to any project, so it doesn't need to be specific to this project. We went through how you can design your box using painter's tape as your friend and your pencil, and then just having fun. So thanks everyone for being here. Hope you have a good week.